Well, I basically live with people and adopt their mindsets and basically feel the empathy of how it is to be a person. And then once I'm in their shoes, I export that back into a company, into an organization, into a country, into a royal family, into a celebrity's world, and basically see the world from the other part, uh, the other point of view. And by doing that, suddenly we actually get closer to the reality because companies or countries or whatever it is have lost complete contact with reality. So I'm basically a reality checker. So bureaucracy and politics today take up so much time in the organization that people are spending more time pleasing each other and doing the, uh, the basically the cabinet, kitchen cabinet stories than actually doing the real stuff. So then they're too busy. Now, if I take a look at my clients, around 65% of the time they spend is in meetings handling politics. So they only have 35% left for the real stuff. They don't have time to visit the customer. So what happened is that they have no feeling of what's going on. They don't have that, as we say in German, Fingerspitzgefühl, which is really the instinct or the feeling of what's going on, it's gone. That is what the founders had in the past. That's the reason why the founder of Ikea or Lego or whatever did what they did, because they had that instinct. They do not have it anymore. So that's really the, the bridges I'm connecting again. Well, I, I try to, first of all, I don't have a phone. Uh, so that's a good way for me to stay alive because I can't fill my world with crap. And there's a lot of crap out there right now. But, but second, I spend time in real homes quite a lot. So since you and I start to talk, I've actually spent time in 2,600 and something different homes across close to 80 countries, literally either living in them or spending time in those homes. And it's not, it's not easy. It's not fun. I mean, I was almost kidnapped in Venezuela and I had huge problems with uh, organized crime in, in Nigeria and all that stuff. But I tell you, I'm alive. And when I come back to the client and I show the real photo of, of what's going on, they sit there and quite often they say to themselves, gee, I'm embarrassed, I don't know this. So this is the way for me to keep myself alive. And because I travel in so many countries, something fascinating is happening. I start to draw parallels between countries so I can predict what one market is doing ahead of another market. So for example, if I'm in, in, in Russia, I realize that Saudi Arabia is very similar to the Russian market. The Saudi Arabian market is very similar to the Chinese market in behavior of consumers. So I start to draw those unusual parallels and that means quite often I can predict what's happening in the market before it happens because a similar market is doing something which reminds me about it. Lowe's is a supermarket chain in the United States and they were close to bankruptcy uh, about five years ago. We asked to come in, reconnect them with the consumer. We had two options. One was to lower the prices, have more SKUs on the shelf, or the other one was to skip all the playbooks and what you do in the supermarket and rebuild a new one. That's what we did. We built uh, supermarkets with greenhouses on top of the, the ceiling where people basically have all the fruit and vegetables you know, grown in front of their eyes. They have fresh carrots coming out, one minute and 23 seconds old. Uh, we basically had all the employees develop their ideas in cooperation with the local population. We teamed up with local farmers, branded their potatoes, brought them in. Literally, we did a community piece of work. Uh, today is one of the fastest growing supermarkets in the US, but most importantly, People loved working there, and they hated working there five years ago. And that's all due to getting closer to the customer. Because they're lazy, because the consumer smells, they're difficult to visit, it's inconvenient, and it's much easier to grab your phone and read through a report and watch a video too. But there is one fundamental difference. You do not feel it. You do not feel a report. You feel it when you're in a consumer home. You have that sense of empathy. Companies today are basically missing the boat because they're so busy doing the bureaucracy, they have no time to talk to the customer. And in fact, what they do is just the opposite. I think the golden thread is, is really three things. One is to be incredibly provocative. So I tend to believe that creativity is to combine two ordinary things in a new way. If you take ski Dubai, classic crazy idea, snow, desert, combine a new way, and suddenly you have a brand. So that's the first thing I do. The second thing is I do it based on working with the customer and voicing their things. So basically what I do is I look for insight, small, seemingly insignificant observations, and then I turn it around into this world. And let me just give you a quick example. If I take Swiss International Airlines, they wanted us to rebrand economy class. Of course, people will say better catering, more lake room, whatever. What we realized was the key differentiating factor between economy and business class is anxiety. Anxiety. If we could remove anxiety for economy class, we would be able to pay or charge a premium price. 
So what we did was when the captain is landing now in some of our pilot markets, basically the captain will tell you what the transportation time is to immigration, how long time the waiting time in immigration is, how long time the lockers carousel will take, and by the way, what ways are saying in terms of transportation time back to your home in Manhattan on the speakers, in the plane, and suddenly people say, whoa, I don't feel anxious anymore. So we are basically taking those insights and infusing it into things. And the third thing is, I try to navigate through the political system in organizations so the big idea is not compromised, but it stay intact throughout that entire process, which, by the way, is the hardest part of it. I, I love this setup, and I love this setup because it's not flashy in terms of bells and whistles everywhere. It is slightly humble, and it has a sense of authenticity. Uh, people here have a sincere opinion that they want to change. They want to learn. They're not here to be entertained. They want to learn. And you feel that in the DNA, in the fabric of everything which is happening. And it, it's because the foundation is right. Uh, I see this as an unpolished diamond, I have to say. And, and I'm right now so pleased to see the unpolished diamond becoming more and more shiny because you can clearly see how it's evolved. So I'm amazed by this stuff. I love it. Uh, and I wish uh, this would become the standard of, of the world of, of how to learn because there's a lot to be done.